Welcome to the Manifestation Bay podcast. My name is Katherine Zinkina, and I'm a manifestation expert, master mindset coach, and multiple seven-figure entrepreneur. I'm obsessed with helping you achieve everything that you once thought was impossible. If you're looking to massively up-level your life, your finances, your relationships, your productivity and success, then you have come to the right place. My goal in this podcast is to help you see the infinite potential within yourself to be, do, and have anything that your heart desires. Think of this podcast as your weekly dose of mindset development to help you maximize who you are and where you're going. Leave it to me to provide you with the tools, the resources, the strategies, and teachings that you need to manifest a reality wilder than your wildest dreams. I know we're about to have so much fun together, so thank you so much for pushing play today, and now let's begin. Hello, gorgeous souls, and welcome back to the Manifestation Babe podcast. I cannot believe it's already been an entire year since I brought on my very first guest onto my podcast. Do you guys remember the interview I did with my business mentor and fellow manifestation-obsessed, super nerdy friend, James Wedmore? Obviously, if you're new here or have been new in the last 12 months, this will be a brand new episode, so don't even worry about refreshing your memory. I decided to re-air this episode I did last year with my mentor, James, so that you can get a whole new perspective on one of the juiciest and my personal favorite business manifestation stories. Now, before you go, oh, Catherine, I've already heard this episode. Moving on, I'm going to politely stop you for a moment, check in with you, and ask you. But did you implement everything you learned from the episode last year? Did you put it into practice? Did you put it into action? Did you experience the quantum leaps that this episode has the potential to create for you? If not, listen again and again and again, and then apply again. And be prepared this time to get inspired to build a successful business that can thrive through any economy, pandemic or not. Truth be told, babes, you are still 100% responsible for your own reality. In all cases, there are always people who are thriving because they choose to thrive even when the entire world gives into fear. James is someone who, through this entire pandemic, has been able to still grow his business, provide for his employees buy two properties in Sedona, and spend his time remodeling and renovating the properties for when the tourism market opens back up. Talk about badass. And he has 11 years of business experience in his back pocket. So he's been in this online world for a really long time. He's someone I personally look up to and feel so blessed to call one of my good friends. It's because of him and so many of his strategies, tactics, and mindset hacks that I've been able to thrive through this pandemic as well. In fact, while most are letting go of their employees, Manifestation Babe has actually been hiring and expanding. And that very same reality is possible for you too. You just have to decide it for yourself. If you're new to James, here's a little bit about him. For 10 years, James Wedmore taught entrepreneurs and online business owners how to leverage the power of online video and YouTube marketing to reach more people, share their message, and convert more customers. In 2016, James made a massive shift to focus on a big gap missing in the marketplace, the mindset needed for entrepreneurship. By the way, as I'm reading his bio, I just realized that it was in 2016 that James made a massive shift to focus on the big gap missing in the marketplace, which is like the mindset all around business and entrepreneurship, which is the same year that I started Manifestation Babe, where I realized that the reason my clients weren't getting results in fitness, including myself, was not because of the strategies and tactics, but because of their mindset. So, whoa, I just blew my own mind. Um, He launched a totally woo-woo podcast, the Mind Your Business podcast, and his signature program, business by design. Today, he helps coaches, experts, content creators, and authors not only to craft better marketing messages, but also how to ditch the hustle mentality and create success from the inside out. Manifestation babes, prepare to take lots of notes and completely fill out your notebooks. And because this is such a great episode. And while you're at it, make sure you go ahead and sign up for the business 
by design waitlist at manifestyourbusinessbydesign.com. This is James's signature business in the box program that will help you scale your business so that you can have the freedom that inspired you to start your business in the first place. This is a program I've had personally my entire team go through, including myself many times that's helped us grow rapidly since we discovered it back in 2018. I am a proud affiliate again this year, and you bet your booty, there's going to be bonuses galore to help you manifest your dream business provided by yours truly. Again, that's manifestyourbusinessbydesign.com for the wait list. Put your name down and I will let you know the moment that doors open this year because I know there's going to be a very short open and close cart just like last year. So you're probably only going to have like three or four days to make your decision. So get on that wait list so that I can email you not only with additional awesome business value value around how to build your business, the mindset behind entrepreneurship and a successful thriving business, but also let you know any updates in case anything changes or the moment that doors open up. This program and this episode is the perfect blend of marrying the woo with the practical strategy of creating your dream business. Now let's go ahead and dive into today's episode. Hello, gorgeous souls, and welcome back to the Manifestation Bay podcast. I am so, so stoked that you chose to tune into this episode today because I have a special guest, which is a phrase I thought I would never say on this podcast because honestly, I always intended it to be a solo podcast, but things change. I evolve. I'm onto a new challenge, and I am so freaking grateful to bring in the guest that I have today. James Wedmore. Oh, yay. I'm I'm honored. Thanks for making me the first guest. You're my first and only so far. How Can does I, that feel? I, well, it feels really it feels really special. I'm I'm serious. It feels really special. I have to ask though, what was your thinking like with wanting to keep it a solo show? Like what was the focus or intention there? Are you interviewing me now? <laughs> On my own podcast, like, hello. Okay, she can edit this out if she doesn't like the question. <laughs> I'm no, curious. We're going to keep it real. Um, I don't know. I felt like I could go on with my content forever. And then I realized that collaboration is the key to the next level. Mm-hmm. And so it's yeah. really not just about me. And I really wanted to embrace more of that, knowing that it's not just, it's not just me. Yeah. There are so many people that I can bring on to collaborate with, to that I felt like I could impact more people by bringing people on. Yeah. Well, because I, I, I asked because I felt the same way about my show when I started it. It was much more really? like I had some thoughts and some perspectives that I wanted to share. And then I dabbled a bit with the with the interviews. And like it was through those conversations that stuff got created that I was like, whoa, that wouldn't have come up right. on my own. Right. Yeah. So uh, I'm very excited. I'm glad yeah. you're doing it. And I'm extremely honored. So thank you. Yes. I'm so grateful to have you. And this is such a full circle moment because the very first conversation that you and I had was you interviewing me on your podcast. Yes, it was. And I will never forget. I was in Costa Rica. I had like the crappiest Wi-Fi at the time. And there were like monkeys outside yep. chattering and, and lizards making noises and all kinds of bugs. And I remember literally kicking out because I was with my family. And I remember kicking out my grandma out of the, out of the room. Rude. And she was so upset with me. I just remember like sitting there and needing to pump myself back up because I'm like, oh my God, this James Wenmore guy, I'm about to talk to him. And my, you know, now my grandma just got upset with me. Like, what am I supposed to do here? Ah, but I'm so excited to have you back. And um, it's so funny. I wanted to bring up that first conversation because I remember the first thing that I said to you was, um, I've heard a lot of great things about you. And you know and what you one said? Bad thing. You know what you said back? <laughs> no. I'll never forget it. You were like, oh, I paid all those people to say that. <laughs> and then we just like continued on. And I just remember being like, okay, all right. And we just like continued on with our conversation, like nothing ever happened. And I will come to say here that James did not pay me to say this. But James, you are one of the most amazing, genuine humans that I know. And I am so blessed to call you both a friend and a mentor. 
And I have learned so, so much from you in not only in business, but even manifestation and mindset. And you're one of my biggest role models, biggest inspiration. So of course, appropriately, you are my first interview and I'm just so, so stoked to have you here. Thank you. Checks in the mail. (laughs) (laughs) Well, actually... You did give me a crystal not too long ago. So maybe that was your payment. That was the compensation. Okay. Okay. No, I really, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So James, for those of my listeners Mm -hmm. who very surprisingly may not know you yet, Mm -hmm. can you give us just a quick recap of what you do, what you're most passionate about and who you are? Yeah. The quickest, shortest recap. You know, I'm, uh, I I run my own business and uh, wow, I started 12 years ago, 12 years ago. I was like, this whole idea of you could make money on the internet was this really exciting thing to me. And I, and then people were like, you could do it selling what you know. And I was like, kind of, you know, young and stupid and just out of college. So all I really knew was how to bartend. So I uh, created an online bartending school. This is like back in 2007. And uh, someone bought it. Someone bought my online bartending class and I was in business. And I think I fell in love with the internet, with entrepreneurship, with business, with marketing, with selling from that moment. It was April 18th, 2008 was when I made that very first sale. I spent six months wow. trying to build that thing. I'll never forget that day. I mean, that was still like just everything changed that day when that sale came in. San Antonio, Texas for $199.95, 1895 shipping. And, uh, and everything from that moment has been this exciting journey. I've gone through all these like iterations. I was the YouTube guy for several years because I went to film school. So for years, I, would, I was teaching other business owners and entrepreneurs how to use things like YouTube and video to grow their business. Um, and today, where I really help is, is, um, is anybody who wants to be creating something like an online course, a membership, or a group coaching, and really how to take that to the market, how to scale that, how to grow that the right way. And uh, something along the way really shifted, which is why I think we resonate with each other so much, is that as I, <laughs> as I went to go and grow this thing called a business, I realized that something else needed to grow in order for the business to grow. And that was me, Hmm. you know, and that was what was going on between my ears and, you know, what was going on in my heart. And I had a lot of growing and a lot of growing up to do a lot of evolving. And, um, that's a journey that I got really passionately obsessed about. And, uh, where I really landed is that we see so many people that are trying to start a business. So many people have been struggling for so long, looking inward at themselves tends to be the last place they ever look. Mm, And that's where all the magic happens. And so about four years ago, I did the scariest thing still to this day, scariest thing I've ever done in my business. Scariest thing. I was at the height of my like YouTube video guy. Like you could ask anybody, who's the guy you go to for the YouTube stuff? And they're like that James Wedmore guy. And at the height of that, I released a podcast called Mind Your Business. And it was what I like to say today is like I coming out of the woo woo closet. And I started sharing publicly all this weird stuff I had been doing behind the scenes that I still believe, but firmly believe was what attributed to all that growth. The mindset, the the energy, the manifesting, you know, the law of attraction, the visualizing, the letting go and changing of beliefs, all of that stuff. And that's what I'm so passionate about today is like, I I really want to help people grow um, personally, professionally, spiritually. And as a, as a result, as a byproduct, their business grows. Yeah. Wow. That's really inspiring. That is so awesome. So 12 years. Um, It's funny. I actually was on YouTube yesterday and I, I don't remember who I was. I was was talking to my team and we brought up how you and Lewis Howes used to be in business together way back in the day. And that was Mm -hmm. like a big turning point for you when you guys made $400,000 in just 30 30 days, days and how you ended up getting depressed. Right. You were. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So that was 2011. Mm -hmm. When I started, it was 2007. So 2007, eight, nine, 10, 11. So four and a half, five years, all these desires, all these dreams, Mm -hmm. all these visions of like, you know, I just like imagine like the money coming in, flying out of the computer screen, like, you know, your laptops and ATM got that kind of crap. Right. (laughs) And, um, so much burning desire, like so much as I read the think and grow rich. You got to have this like burning desire. I'm like, I have the burning desire. Right. And, um, so much hunger to the point that um, I got addicted to Adderall. You ever done Adderall before? I have once. Okay. And it was magic. Yeah, it is magic. Dangerously good. Da- da- dangerously good is the best way to describe mm-hmm. it because it is basically like legalized crack. Mm-hmm. Legalized form of speed. Um, I got addicted to that stuff. Not, not like addicted in the like 
it's not an addiction. It was just like, this is amazing. Let's do it again tomorrow. I'd get out of bed in the morning. I'd pop one of those pills. That was me trying to make a, I can't make that noise. We'll add that in in post. Popped one of those in my mouth, but like eight or nine in the morning and you're going straight until like two in the morning. Most productive, effective, concentrated, focused day of your life, right? And I was doing this constantly. I dropped down to 145 pounds. To give context, right now, I weigh about 175. Somehow there could be 30 pounds less of oh me. Oh my God, I, I can't like even a, imagine. I was like a skeleton. Wow. Um, I was doing anything and everything, whatever it took. Hardest working person on the planet and I was broke. Um, but I didn't give up. I kept going. I kept trying different things. And I just didn't, didn't give up. Five years of that. Okay, so most people, they, they do a year of this. They do six months and they go, it's not working. I give up. It's like, I did this for five years straight with nothing. Like just nothing. Like when I made that bartending sale, I was making maybe one or two, like every 10 to 12 days, I'd make one, right? It's like, you can't really live on $400 a month. Right. Most people can't. But I was, I was going to keep going no matter what. Then September, 2011, Lewis Howes and I launched this program called Video Traffic Academy, 400,000 in sales in 30 days, in 30, less than 30 days. A lot of it was in like three days, right? But in a total, oh that month God. of September, everything I had ever wanted for the past five years came flooding into my life in less than a month. I had everything that I'd ever wanted and had been asked for. And then I got hit with this scary realization that I didn't realize until hindsight, you know, because hindsight's 2020, that it didn't make me any different. Mm. I still felt the same way about myself. I was still that broke, insecure loser. Mm-hmm. that I thought of myself as. Mm-hmm. It didn't change me. All this money in the bank account and I was still that same person. And then of course, so that was the first piece. That was a very scary realization that it's like everything I'd wanted for five years wasn't because of the money, but who I thought it was going to make me finally become. Wow. So you felt so unfulfilled. Completely. And then of course, I didn't have anything after that. There was no goal beyond that. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it really was just was like, what's the point? What's the point of any of this, of all of this? What's the point? And I fell into like what I later called, I didn't in the moment. And that's the thing. I think it's hard in the moment. It was in hindsight again that I was like, oh, dude, I was so depressed. I just didn't do anything. I went from those 14 hour days to, of working to nothing. Like I watched every show on Netflix, like The Office, like three times. Like I can recite that show forward and backwards because of that time in my life, right? And uh, yeah, and doing like some drugs. I was like smoking a bunch of pot and like drinking and just like, wouldn't, I just remember days I just wouldn't get off the couch. I was like, what's the point? And um, yeah, that was a really dark time. I got out of it. Right. I got out of it. Yeah. And um, James, what would you say like for the people who, because I come across, a, a, you know, my babes come to me all the time and they think that, and I've worked with tons of clients who think that when they start making X amount of dollars per month, they're going to feel secure they're going to feel happy. They're going to feel like they have everything in the world going for them. And only then will they feel secure enough to feel safe enough so that only then they can go to the next level. Meaning like I've worked with clients who made 50K a month and I know some people would kill to make 50K a month. And they think that when they reach 100K per month, that's when everything's going to fall into place. And I would always tell them, listen, I know you cannot conceptualize this right now, but even if you made a billion dollars a month right now, Even if you made a billion dollars a month right now, you're never, ever going to feel secure and safe because that doesn't come from any external circumstances. It only comes inside. How did you start doing that work on yourself? How did you start um, working on that internal, the the thoughts, the beliefs, the the mindset? When did that come in? Well, what it helped was this moment right here because I realized exactly what you're saying was finally true. Mm-hmm. And I realized other people had been trying to tell me this mm-hmm. in books and audios and stuff. And I hadn't listened. Nope. I hadn't listened, guys. I wasn't listening. And then I finally decided to listen. Um, I had the money and nothing had changed. Yeah. Nothing had changed. And so it took, it took some time, of course. Um, but I did have to start to realize that in, until I'm making those decisions and choices now, nothing outside externally is going to, is really determining my state. And why this is so important is because the worst thing you want to get to, and people won't believe us, but the worst thing you want to be doing is, is making a bunch of money, all the money that you want, all the things that is in your, your vortex that you dream and desire. 
and still feel unsafe and insecure and still be saying it's not enough. That is, that is where it gets really scary, really dangerous, mm-hmm. because if it's not enough, then it's never enough. Never. It's, it's, it's never enough. And look, we did, we did over $8 million in revenue last year. And I can still see that monkey mind, uh, like self-talk voice in my head, bring up some of those old thoughts. Mm. They'll say, they'll say things like, is it enough? And like, blah, 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 you know, um, uh, a little bit more would, would give a little bit more cushion, a little bit more rainy day fund. Right. And you just have, you just, the game doesn't change. You just get better at it and you just go, Shh, not today. Right. Yeah. Not today. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's uh, it's so critically important because, um, the other place to look at it is let's say somebody has this goal, like, okay, if I was doing $10,000 a month, like let's say that's your next goal, like $10,000 a month. And then we'd start to tell ourselves this story that it will bring, that'll bring me the safety, security, and happiness. What you're also doing is then saying you're not safe, secure, and happy now. And that, that vib- vibratory state, that frequency of being unhappy, unsecure, and unsafe, you can't get to safe from unsafe. Right. You, you can't get from, to that state from this state. And so, you know, it's simple. This is the work is it's not easy. We can make it simple for you, but it's not, it's not going to be easy. In fact, I don't think we came here for easy. No, I think, I think that's the whole point. If it was so easy, um, it would be boring. It would get boring really fast. Faith takes something from us, trusting in ourselves, trusting in something bigger, brighter, bolder, like that takes something that takes some courage. Uh, that really does take courage. S- being scared, being all those more negative emotions can be easy. It's like, it's yeah. really easy. Um, that takes something. And um, it'll be that conscious decision every moment of every day. Life is a choice. Where are you going to choose to put your attention? Are you going to choose to feel safe and secure now? Because the fact of the matter is, is that for most people, um, that we're speaking to, like if you have the ability to be listening to our voices, you do have some some circumstances that you can be grateful for that are keeping you safe. Yeah. Like if you have a cell phone, chances are like probably have a roof over your head right now. Right. And we know there are a lot of people on the planet that don't, you know, and we we that's always where I come back to no matter what's going on in my life is like, how can I choose to feel grateful for anything and everything. And during that journey, that's when things started finally clicking for me was, that's, was gratitude. That's so powerful because it really is a choice. And like, I know we have a phrase that we both share called, um, well, it goes like this, your success is inevitable, right? So I remember back when I was building my business off of my grandma's couch, people would ask me all the time, you know, Catherine, if I literally have $5 in the bank, like how could I possibly feel abundant? Um, I remember being on my grandma's couch, $15,000 in debt having like, I don't know, 25, 50 bucks in my checking account. And still yet, I remember training myself to just look at the couch and being like, wow, I have a place to sleep. Looking at the roof over my head and being like, wow, I have, you know, protection. I have shelter. Looking at the clothes that I'm wearing and wow, I have something to keep me warm or something to keep me cool. Um, I have shoes. I have my car. Like there's just so much that we really do have. And it's, it's the, it's the choice that gives us that sense of safety and security. It's the choice that gives us the opportunity to build up upon a foundation. Because when you realize that you do really have everything that you need already inside of you, that's the only foundation you need. And the rest is your success is inevitable Mm -hmm. and you'll figure it out and you'll, you're always on the right path. And as long as you trust that you're going to move forward and whatever comes, you know, whatever comes across in your path, like you will figure it out. And when you come from that mindset, it's like the universe will also throw really good shit along the way. Oh. And, and you'll have so much more to work with than if you just constantly focus on what's in my bank account and the external circumstances and it's not working and blah, 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 blah. Um, I want to ask you, how did you come to believe that in your business? Mm. Because I, when I look at you, I see someone who is so absolutely certain, like the level of confidence that you have. And I don't know, obviously how you feel on the inside. And I'm assuming that you feel really good because your external circumstances are pretty amazing. But how did you come to believe that no matter what, everything is going to work out? Yep. And I want to answer that. I want to go back to some of the stuff you said, really, if that's okay. Mm-hmm. Cause it was, yeah. I love what you said. Um, cause you talked about choice as well. And 
I can imagine that there's someone listening saying, but I don't have a choice. In fact, that's one of the most common things you'll hear where we're already like pinching off possibility in our lives is saying, I don't have a choice. I even saying I have to is declaring to the universe that I don't have choice. And the fact is, is that we always have choice on where we put our attention. Mm -hmm. Your perspective creates your experience. And so one of the, I think the greatest things is the, uh, is the, what would Jesus do question? Because it's a question that automatically, and it's somebody who has a relationship with, with, with Jesus, obviously, but it, it, to use the same concept, whether it's what would Catherine do? What would Jesus do? What right. would a millionaire do here? Immediately when you ask that question, your subconscious mind is forced to shift your perspective. You're going through something, you say, you know, like maybe you're dealing with like a good friend that's, you know, just said something nasty to you and you feel really hurt and you want to like say something back. And then you go, well, what would Jesus do? And you're like, well, Jesus would have compassion and understanding and would see that they're hurt. That's why they're trying to hurt you. And you're like, oh, well, who saw it just now? And it's like, you did. You just saw it through a different set of eyes. And I just want to remind people that we always have that choice for a new perspective. And if you feel stuck, which is a very common phrase we hear, right? Feeling mm-hmm. stuck. is mm-hmm. it's, it's not that you're actually literally stuck. It's that you're choosing not to look at this from a different perspective. And one great question like that, what would Catherine do? Can immediately unstuck you because you'll see something you haven't seen yet. And then when you talked about the, 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 your listeners or audience member who says like, I literally have $5 in the bank account. Look, here's my answer to that in a, in a, in a heartbeat, in like a five second answer. And, and it does come with a disclaimer of like, I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that. And it's going to, what's going to come out of my mouth, but I'm curious what your thoughts would be on this. To somebody who said, I literally have $5 in the bank account. How can I choose to feel more abundance today? My answer would be give it away. Mm-hmm. Because that's what someone abundant would do. Yeah. And, and that oh. starts to tie into this, this um, unwavering conviction of your success is inevitable. Is if you truly, truly operated in, in, in the, the reality of, of abundance, then you would have no problem giving it away. Oh because God, it is your yes. resistance to letting it go that has prevented any more from coming in. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. let it go. If you let it go and not, not letting it go saying it better, better come back to me today. It was like, but just knowing. I like to treat, to improve my relationship with money. And I know we'll get to your question, I promise. I wanted to treat, I finally got to this place where I said, I, got, I want to treat money the same way I treat air. How many, so we've been on this for 20 minutes. I'm curious, how many breaths have we taken, right? Like we breathe in and out every like five, six, seven seconds, right? Have we once for a moment in our frequency and our mental emotional state worried about, is there going to be enough air for me to breathe in? No, is this going to be not. my lap? You know, when you let it back out, do you go, oh, no, I don't want that air to leave, right? What if you're, and again, it's very intellectually conceptual and tangible, but what if your relationship with money was, was identical to your relationship with air and breathing under normal circumstances, not like in a, right. in a room without, you know, like without windows or anything like that, <laughs> but in a normal day where you breathe in and out, you know, air is all around us. Air is abundant. We, we breathe it in and we let it go. So a lot of people talk when they're only talking about like, I want to improve my manifesting skills and stuff. They're only talking about what they want to bring in. Yeah. But there's the other side of it too. It's like, what's your relationship when you're letting something go? That was hard for me, right? Because think about what you're telling your subconscious, your DNA, your entire reality when you have a hard time letting something go. You're saying there's not a lot of it. Mm -hmm. I don't have, I'll lose this. People that that believe money is... um, you got to work hard to make money, have a hard time letting it go because right. they equate, oh, look at all this work I did for this money. Now I'm giving it away. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get that back. Right. And, um, you know, anyways, there's a lot of work to do there. But yeah, this whole um, notion of your, your success is inevitable and how I got to that place, the short, short answer is for a very long time, I started to get the idea the notion and the concept that your thoughts do create your reality. And I was really fascinated with that. And I just kept going deeper and deeper with that. And there is a difference. There's two types, three types of people. There's two types of people. The, the type of person that thinks there's only two types of people and everybody else. No, that was a joke. <laughs> but there's like three types of people in this, in this scenario. There's like people that don't get this world of what you talk about. 
on like every episode. Maybe sometimes you even right. feel like you're just like like a broken record. Like say, talking to no one. Yeah, it feels like that at times, definitely. And then of course someone reaches out and says, "You've changed my life," right? And you're right. like, "Oh, they're listening." But you know, sometimes it's like I'm just going to say the same thing over and over again, every different way, until it clicks for people. So there's people that don't understand this world yet, you know. And I know you you were talking to me a little bit about like writing mainstream articles. And it's like, no, no, you can't use words like energy and can't manifesting. Can't use law of attraction, manifestation. Yeah. So the the majority of people don't understand this yet. So you guys are in the know. You guys are in the insider, right? And then there's inside of that, you're going to have two people, two types of people. You're going to have the people that know this and they say, oh, I know this, but it's not working. Mm-hmm. And then you have the people that it's working. And the difference is very simple. Knowing as concepts versus living it. Yeah. It's very different. And so the analogy I like to give here is, so let's imagine for a moment that you don't know how to swim. Mm -hmm. And then I give you, I sell you a book Mm. called swimmingsecrets.com, right? Wow. Great title. You read the book cover to cover because you're like a great student. Pop quiz. Do you now know how to swim because you read the book? No. 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 You don't know how to swim until you're in the freaking water, paddling, treading water and doing all the things, right? Right. Experience is only the true form of, of knowledge. Mm. And so what we have are a lot of people that get these concepts, like the concept, your success is inevitable. It's a choice to live your life that way. And that's the difference. It's a choice to read a book and f- learn concepts. It's a choice to jump into the water and see if you'll sink or swim. And I, I, started to get that difference uh, for, for myself, that distinction. And that's, that's going to be the difference, guys. So you can keep listening to this stuff. You can, you can keep going down this rabbit hole and it's beautiful. But the magic begins, you know, like the rubber hits the road when this becomes the choice of how you live your life one moment at a time. Not all the time. That's a big, too big of a pill to swallow. But like in this moment, I'm going to practice this. I'm going to try this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live it. I'm going to operate this way. And I, I started doing that. And one thing that really made a difference for me, and I did a podcast episode on this, was I used to have a really big fear of flying. You've dealt with the fear me of flying. Me too. Yeah. I could not even like bring my ticket to the boarding agent without Xanax. So that's even worse fear than I had. Chelsea, my wife, yeah. used to take Xanax as well. Um, that's how bad it was. So the two of us together on a plane, we're just looking at each other both in fright. Me and my stepdad and my mom were on a plane and my mom was, my mom loves to fly. And my stepdad and I are just like you and Chelsea, both have fear. We both take pills. This was like maybe 10 years ago. We're on a flight from Chicago to LA and the turbulence was so bad that of course me and my stepdad are like, you know, normally freaking out, normally looking at each other, like, what are we going to do? You know? I look over to my mom who loves flying and she starts praying for her life. And that's gotta be so scary. I oh my goodness. literally thought I was going to poop my pants, but <laughs> yeah, it was, it used to be the, I, I used to, I remember a flight from LA to Dubai where I stared at the, I didn't even play. I couldn't even play a movie or a TV show. I don't know if this, this is how you were on planes. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. couldn't even watch a yep. movie or a TV show or read a book or do anything yep. because I kept listening and, and feeling for, is everything normal? Yep. Is everything not normal? And I remember 14 hours straight, just, just sitting in my seat like this and just yeah. couldn't even breathe. Yep. Yep. Uh, I remember I used to look at the flight attendants. Yes. And I'd see their, if their expressions change. And this one time we were flying into Amsterdam and, and the flight attendants walking down the aisle and there's some turbulence that's coming in on the landing. And she paused for just a moment. You could just see this like, like this like she kind of clenched her face up and then kept walking. And that sent me into a total mental tailspin. I was like, oh my gosh, if she's freaked out, I need to be freaked out. Did right you now. have fear of flying before that? Before that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. how my fear of flying started was I was on a plane as a kid and it was like one year after 9-11. And I remember flying from Mexico to LA and all of a sudden the flight attendants start crying and panicking and running up and down the aisles, but they're speaking Spanish. And the whole flight is like asleep. And it's just me. And I'm waking up my dad and my dad's like, go back to sleep. How old were you? Um, like like 12. Yeah. No, no, longer. Maybe like 10. Yeah. I think 10. Yeah. I can't do math that fast, but 10. Um, and I it, that set it off. That created like yeah, this crazy internal representation yeah. of like, okay, now there's going to be a terrorist attack in LA. That's and traumatic. This is the, it was so that's, yep. that's really what sparked it. So I know exactly what you're talking well, about. I, Flight attendant, uh, you know, expressions. Totally. Boom. Well, I think what you guys are going to laugh at me. I think what caught started, cause I didn't have it as a kid. 
you learn it. It's learned behavior. Little kids aren't, most little kids that I've ever seen, including myself, we're not afraid of flying on. It's right. like you learn it as you yeah. get older, which is really fascinating. Um, I watched the whole like first, we went to Vietnam when I was 21, I went with my dad. And uh, I watched the first uh, whole season of Lost on the flight over there, which is basically every episode is the recreation of a plane crash from every different character's perspective while I'm in the middle. And like, by the time I got there, I was like, I don't want to be in a plane ever again. And I think ever since then it got worse, like my, my fear of flying. Anyways, long story short, about t- two years ago, I'm flying back from Sedona, Arizona, and I'm reading a fantastic book, fantastic book called Dissolve the Problem by Richard Dots. Dissolve the Problem. And we can get into a whole conversation about that. Um, he's speaking about the futility of worry in your life. And I'm trying to read this freaking line over and over again, but I can't because there's so much turbulence on the takeoff. And it's literally about the seventh time I'm reading this that something finally clicks for me. And it was this beautiful realization that I'm worrying while reading a book on like the futility of worrying and realizing that we are in a plane. Mm-hmm. I'm not the captain. I do not have any control or say over the fate of this plane. But what I do have control over is my emotional state. Is worrying, panic, fear, and anxiety going to change the outcome of this flight? Mm-hmm. No. Then why suffer for no reason? Right. What's the point of that? And that really hit me like a ton of bricks because I then started to take that con. I mean, I just got it. And I, by the way, since then, I, mean, I really had a bad, really bad fear of flying. Never again. Wow. Just done. It's just a decision. It was like, it's not doing anything for me. It's not, it's not like if I worry more, the plane's going to suddenly like, we're going to be safe. Right. So there's, there's this like surrender acceptance, surrender acceptance to what is in control, you're in control and what isn't, you know, and the, the whole idea of the illusion of control, like thinking that if you worry and freak out, you're going to actually have some control over something that you don't. Then I started to take this as a metaphor and overlay it over to my whole life and my whole business. And I realized there were things I was worrying about that it didn't change the outcome at all. No amount of worrying was going to do anything about it. And I really did start to get beyond the concept and really start to experience my life through that futility of worrying of what it really does. And when I let up on the break of that, like when I stopped doing that, because today I really look like it's like you're in a car, you're going in a direction, your business is your car, and this worry and fear is like the brake. It's like if you just ease up off the brake, right. you're going to go a lot faster and it's going to be a smoother ride. But I, I started to realize how much that fear, worry, need to control, all that type of stuff was actually hindering my performance and preventing the growth that I wanted. And it was like that final 5 10% of just letting that go, like let so much more in. Mm. And I really, Powerful. yeah, and I really got at such a deeper level how much your, your thoughts are creating your reality, your thoughts combined with your emotions. And the fact is, is that your fears and worries manifest faster than your desires yeah. because they're more powerfully charged. Yeah. You think about something you want and yeah. you think of something you're afraid of. And it's, it's been like scientifically proven that we're more motivated to move away from pain and fear anyways. So you think of the thing you want, you think of the thing you don't want, and you're most likely more focused on how to move away from that thing that you're afraid of. And if we just spend a little bit more of our time focusing only on the outcome orientation, like what we want mm-hmm. without the fear or the worry, I believe we'd all get there a lot faster because worrying about it ain't going to do anything anyways. God, that's so powerful. Would you say that's when you really integrated manifestation into your business? Like when did you, how did you come across Mm -hmm. the concept of manifestation? Mm -hmm. Because I remember listening to one of your podcasts where you literally threw an Abraham's, Abraham Hicks book into the trash can. In the basura. Right in the trash can in front of your mom. And so I'm curious to hear a little bit about how, because I I know personally for me, like manifestation plays a huge role in my business. People ask me all the time, Catherine, what's your secret strategy? Like I manifest it. I don't, yeah. I don't know what else to tell you. I, there's nothing I don't have. There's nothing that I have access to that you don't. I like Googled and YouTubed and business by design my way through here. Learn a couple things from you, but it's like everybody has access to those things. So the rest of it really comes from manifestation. Yes. Like I really integrate that into my business and I believe that that's my edge. 
And I know that that's your edge too. So how did that come into your business? And do you remember a distinct difference oh, yeah. between before it entered your life or at least before the decision of you actually applying it to your business and what happened to your business after? Oh, such a distinct before and after. Um, <laughs> okay. So, and first off, isn't it funny when you start talking about stuff like that, people are like, oh, I've manifested some stuff before. And it's like, no, everything is a manifestation. Everything. It's not like only the couple of things that went right are a manifestation. It's like everything. That's, that takes us to a whole nother level for people when you're like, no, no, no. You manifested what you're receiving on this episode right now. Like whatever you just heard, whatever you've been receiving, like you manifested that. Wherever you are in this moment in time, whatever you're doing, like you created that. And that can trigger people. Yeah, it can. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I love a, a good trigger here and there. Um, okay. So let's rewind the clock. Yeah. My mom in 2006, um, my mom got me the book, uh, Asking is Given. And I was like, was that your very first? Because mine was the secret. Was that your first? Because that one freaked me out when I when I read asking it is given after the secret. I was like, what the f is this? So it even freaked me out. And so I can't imagine that being the first introduction. So I'm trying to remember. I think the I think they got me that book, and um, I'm pretty sure that was the first one. They got me the book. I read the 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 foreword or whatever, and it talks about this woman channeling. And I was like, and I was so like in this like masculine hustle, work hard, be successful attitude, which was my dad. Learned that from my dad. Um, my mom and sister were like these airy fairy types. So it was like, I had both worlds and it was, it's so awesome to have both of those. Very grateful for that. So I just take the book and I'm like, nope, just throw it. Like I wanted my mom to see that I was throwing this away. I was like, look, mom, mom, bad kid. look, <laughs> this is garbage. Get this crap out of here. We work for a living. We don't, we don't get lazy manifesting woo woo nonsense here. I was like, I, so that's why like, I actually really, um, respect and, and, and appreciate the perspective that people hold when they're very skeptical of when I start talking about this stuff. Um, and so for ladies out there that have a boyfriend, spouse, you know, significant other, it's like, Hey, you know what? They can come around. They can come around. I did. So they can as well. Um, so that was the first thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, I watched the secret and I was open to that. I had a dream like couple of weeks after watching The Secret, I was still bartender at the time, of uh, the number 100, $100. Hmm. And I went into my bartending job that day and I just wrote it down on a piece of paper and put it at my cash register. And I was like, I'm going to walk away with $100 today. And I walked away with a $101 tip. Wow. Total, like total in tips. And um, what was really crazy is like the weirdest stuff happened that day. Like two of my friends came in out of the blue. They've never, they never come into that bar. I was like, what are you guys doing? They're like, I don't know. We just, we felt like checking in, see what you were up to. And they like, they left me this like $30, tip, you know? And it was just like this, then this couple came and they gave a big tip. It's like all these things happened. I was like, huh. Um, but I didn't really think much of it. And um, the big, the big change for me was, uh, and I'm going to give the shortest version possible of this story, but I got introduced into a Reiki community. Uh, this, this girl that I started dating was doing energy work. She was doing Reiki. And I was in this like gung ho, this is my Adderall days, you know, like 14 hour days. And I remember specifically she came over and I was so fresh. That was my MOs, frustrated, impatient, like, let's go, come on, just pounding my keyboard. She takes her hand, she puts it right on my back, like chakra four, like right upper back. And like, I wanted so hard to stay angry and it was just like melting away. I was like, no, but um, what, what's happening? What, what's going on? Why am I not angry? And it was like the weirdest, most bizarre experience. I just couldn't be angry anymore. I couldn't be impatient. And she started doing some healings on me and I started getting more energy, more creativity, more clarity. And I went through this whole thing. So I got introduced into it from a different context. And uh, the, there was that time that we all have this time where we like do the experiment and it works. And that experience for me was I ended up, I, I dated that, that girl and her birthday was coming up and she wanted Tony Robbins tickets. And I go check my bank account. I have $500 to my name. I go call up Tony Robbins, $1,000 for two tickets. I asked if they could take a payment plan. They literally laughed at me. Oh my God. They couldn't even break it up into two payments. Uh, so I got off the phone. I went to go check my bank account. And I had left up a Google AdWords thing and it had just debited, taken out $500 from my account. I was down to less than a dollar to my name. 
And I was like, this is pathetic. I can't even get my girlfriend a gift. And I was like 27 at the time. I'm like, this is pathetic. I'm pathetic. And then I remembered all this stuff I'd been learning. And that's what we're talking about here is like, I knew all this stuff, but I wasn't using it. You weren't living it. I wasn't living it. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I had a belief there. I didn't even realize it till that moment. The belief was that I can only get what I want if I have the money. And I said, well, if I just use this manifesting stuff, I don't need that. I can bypass the money and I can just manifest the tickets. And I just set this little intention, this little decision. It was just this little decision of like, this is done. And because it was for somebody else, and that's a secret, by the way, that's Mm. like one of my secrets to my success. We tend to have all this stuff come up about our own worthiness, even though like we all come from source and everything's abundant and there's no lack or limitation. We still think like, oh, it's too much for me, you know, like, cause there's some sort of finite supply that we're taking away from somebody else. But we go through our human finite illusion of lack, of course, and say like, oh, I don't deserve this. And so I was definitely in that place. So I said, but this isn't for me. This is for her. And if I love her. She, you know, I want her to have the best birthday, all that stuff. So I want to do this. This is for her, not me. Get me out of the way and just create this, make this happen. Anyway, it apparently works. Just two days later, I randomly get called from a friend like, hey, you want to go play tennis? Sure, we go play tennis. And uh, we're, we're playing. She's like, so what are you been up to? And I tell her what I, the business I'm trying to start. It was a service I was doing, video stuff at the time for clients. And she goes, would you do one for me? If you do, I'll, I'll pay you in Tony Robbins tickets. No way. I literally dropped my racket. I was like, are you kidding me? What did, what did you just say? Like chills ran down my whole body. She's like, yeah. I, I work with a rep and he gives me a ton of Tony Robbins tickets. Anytime he's in Southern California, he's coming to Long Beach in like three weeks. I'm like, I know I'm trying to get tickets. She's like, well, I got two for you. Sure enough, I did the work, got my two tickets and we went. And that was the first time in my life that like something clicked. I was like, there's something to this. And our personality type, INTJ, we're the, we're the scientists. Mm-hmm. So we test, mm-hmm. we experiment. And I said, in order to really test, I can't bring my biases and beliefs into this. You got to test objectively. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. You know, because if you go, all right, I'll test this. I don't believe it. Right? That whole like, I'll I'll see it when I believe it. No, 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 no. You you saw it because you believed it, right? Mm -hmm. Right? You got to, you got to believe it first. I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try this and I'm going to go all in with it. And we're going to see what happens. And it was just more and more and more and more of those things just kept happening left and right constantly until you're like, why am I still experimenting? <laughs> Why is this still a, a, an right. experiment? Let know? it be my life now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's so powerful. It sounds so similar to the experiment that I had in um, March of 2016 when I was on my grandma's couch. And that's where my, um, you know, your success is inevitable concept came in for me was I was on my grandma's couch and I was, you know, we have such similar journeys because my journey really started in Tony Robbins event. I remember manifesting my own Tony Robbins tickets. Mm-hmm. This time I had my um, ex-boyfriend buy them for me as a birthday present. And funny enough, at Tony Robbins, that's where I had my big aha moments so that I was, I was in the wrong relationship. So of course, he never ended up liking Tony Robbins. I'm actually friends with him to this day. And he's like, yeah, Tony's cool. I just don't like how he uh, convinces people to break up with their significant others. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, you met your wife because I broke up with you. So um, <laughs> so, so a lot of that, uh, you know, I feel like so many people, in fact, I have a couple of my friends at a Tony Robbins event right now. Cause I'm just like this giver of Tony Robbins tickets now. Mm, so it's like come so yep. full circle. Um, I remember being on my grandma's couch and coming across a Tony Robbins quote and it was live as though your prayers have already been answered. And I remember being like, whoa, for some reason, I just stared at it for a good 30 seconds, contemplated it. And then I was like, okay my position sucks right now. What's the worst that can happen? I'm going to end up on my grandma's couch, right? Ooh, look at that. I'm already here. Right. I'm already at my lowest point. Right. So what is the harm in just going all in? Because very similar to you, by that point, I had maybe seven or eight years of knowing the law of attraction exists. Like I've read every book. Mm-hmm. I've listened um, to several podcasts. I really dove into podcasts more and audiobooks after that. But like I've read every book. I went to some seminars and I just still wasn't living it. And so I made this commitment to myself that what if for the next 12 months, I 
do everything in my power in my business and building this business. And this is actually something I don't share um, very often. Like when I'm on other people's podcasts, like they ask me like, how did Manifestation Babe come about? And I never tell them that it was literally an intuitive download where I was in my parents' bedroom and out of nowhere, while I was frustrated with my other business, my fitness coaching business, and not making very much money, very frustrated, working so, so damn hard, obviously not living the law of attraction. I remember this voice coming through being like, you need to open an Instagram account right now. Hmm. It's going to be called Manifestation Babe. And this is going to be a brand that's really going to take off for you. And I was like, what? It was so wild. And out of nowhere, I found so much motivation to just start posting on this random Instagram account that I just created. And I ended up learning how to build a website and all this stuff. But like, I still wasn't living it. And so I created, I, I used Manifestation Babe to be my experiment. Like we're yes. both INTJ. So I used it as my experiment to where, what if for the next 12 months I could document that this is absolutely true. That if I were to believe in the law of attraction 100% without a shadow of a doubt and believe my success is inevitable and share that with the world and just see what comes about it, then you know if the game with the experiment was successful at the end of 12 months, then guess what? I just keep living the experiment. And if it doesn't, again, what's the worst, that's the that, can worst happen, that can happen? Yeah. Right. And I know you were building your business in your parents' basement, basement right? Yeah. So like, it's just, it's just so crazy. It's like, you just have to go all in. And at some point you just have to, you know, I know that my listeners are listening to podcasts. They're, they're just like me. They listen to podcasts all the time. They buy the audiobooks, they go to the seminars, they do the retreats. And at some point you just have to make a decision. Like it's no longer concepts. You have to apply this to your life. You have yeah. to actually live it. Yeah. Which is so and, powerful. And where most people have the brakes on, where they're not moving in faith, it's, it's fear of faith. Right? Yeah. Um, you just demonstrated so beautifully is that a lot of times what, what we're afraid of, and by the way, we can get into a whole conversation of like, a lot of times, a lot of times it does come back to fear, but people say, no, 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 it's not fear. I just don't want to make the wrong decision. Oh, you mean, so you're afraid you're going to make the wrong decision? Oh yeah, I guess I am. So like nine times out of yeah. 10, it really is fear. But what most of us don't do, and I'm so glad because you just demonstrated that so beautifully, is we don't look at the fear. We, we kind of like, it's kind of like walking into a dark room or like when you're a kid and the boogeyman is in the closet and it's just this darkness. And because you can't see it, it scares you even more. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're afraid of this worst case scenario. And then what you did is you took your attention and shone, sh shined the light on it. You're like, let's, what is the worst case scenario? And when you like put some light on it, we tend to realize like, it's not really that bad. Like the worst thing that could happen isn't that bad. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a, what a beautiful way to like free yourself from a lot of that fear. Like here's a great example. How many listeners here have had an idea for a business, but you haven't moved forward yet because maybe you have a couple of ideas or you're not hundred percent sold on it yet. You don't have that download that, that Catherine got. Cause I didn't get a download like that. I wish I had more downloads <laughs> like that. That was awesome. We don't all get that. Right. And um, for me, it was, it was much based on something I teach my students all the time is they're waiting for clarity before they take action. Mm -hmm. That might be what some of you are doing here is waiting for the download, waiting for the neon signs, waiting for the permission slip before you take action is backwards. Clarity comes from action. The more action we take, the more clear things become. And um, so there's this like, I don't know what business to start. I don't know what niche. I don't know. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -do. And it's like, what's the worst that could happen if you chose the wrong? You right. know, if you went the wrong niche, the wrong type of client, the wrong type of business, what's the worst thing that could happen? And it's like, you'd probably find out pretty fast because you had gone with the, with the, uh, the, the fitness mm -hmm. coaching business. Yeah. How, how long had you been working on? Um, two and a half years. Yeah. And so how many lessons did you learn from that? Right. Oh my God. How, so many. How, what if, is there is there another way that we can look at this is like everything in that business simply prepared you for everything you needed to do to succeed with this one. It 100% did. And what's going to prepare and anyone listening by doing nothing, doing nothing doesn't prepare you for what you want. So even going in the wrong direction will give you clarity on what the right direction is. And it will probably give you the lessons, the tools, the skills, and the experience you need so that when you do go in the right direction, you're mm. going to be equipped. Because look, if you had to learn all the lessons you learned from two and a half years of that business, imagine if you learned that while you were starting that account, it would have taken two and a half years longer. Right. 
Exactly. You know, and that's what people don't get. And when I started, I was a bartender. Okay, guys, I was teaching online bartending school. And 12 it, years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was like everything I learned there prepared me for what I did next. And there's yes. other, other phases that we don't have to get into my whole story. And then that prepared me for the next thing. And everything is like the leapfrog yeah. effect. So I'm a big believer that um, success and failure are not two different paths. They're actually one in the same yeah. because you have to fail your way to success. You have to. And yes. I know that there's so much power in learning from your mistakes. And like mistakes is the only way to learn. Like success is such a poor teacher and it's your failures that are going to, that are going to, attach emotion to the lessons to where you never repeat them again. Success is a poor te- a teacher. And the other way to say it, but what I really love is like success makes for a lazy student. It does. You just like, you don't, when you're, when you're happy celebrating, you know, conditional happiness, because like, I just did a big win and you're all grateful and excited. You're most people don't stop and say, okay, so what really made that work? Mm-hmm. What was, what really made the difference? Yeah. But when, when something didn't go your way, which is life, by the way, that's when we have the opportunity, the blessing to stop and be like, what's going on here? Like, what caused this? What, what did I miss? What am I not seeing? Those are the, that's the most beautiful moments. Those questions create everything that we need. But when you're sitting there doing nothing, you're not going to have any of that. Right. It's just waiting to get started. And then we never do. Right. And you have a program called Business by Design, which is absolutely mind blowingly amazing. Like you have created a Bible for people, like where they <laughs> the can just Bible. the bus- literally the business Bible. Um, and it is amazing. It's something that I've personally taken. I've had my whole team go through it. Anyone who I, I mentor a couple people also in, in business, uh, some of my friends, and I always tell them like, you need James, mm. you need business by design is part of your passion for creating that program and what you do every single day and how you show up for other entrepreneurs does it come from that 12-year journey that you've had of all the different mistakes that you've made where you in some way, shape, or form want to at least help alleviate some pain in other people's lives where you're like, okay, even though you're going to learn from your mistakes and mistakes are, are good to make, there's a lot of pain I can save you. There's a lot of shortcuts I can give you. Yes, you're still going to learn and yes, you're, you're still going to have to be resourceful and yes, you're still going to have to really do the inner work and believe that your success is inevitable. But are there, is, is that where your passion comes from? And is, is there any particular mistake that you see business owners make where if they, if you could just take that out of their experience or take that out of their tool belt, they would save themselves so much time and energy and pain? I think the, um, the short answer to the first part of that question is like this idea of like, what if your journey and everything that you're going through is happening in, for a reason in order to shorten someone else's journey? Mm, you know, it's like, I love that. just to make it a little bit easier for somebody else. And my journey was really long. I mean, I, it, like I said, it was five years before anything popped, anything started working. And yeah, that's, that is still a big driver. It's like, if I could, if I could make it four years for someone, four and a half years, you know, right. like four years and 11 months, then, <laughs> then that's a win for me. Um, our students end up having a much shorter journey. And that's really weird too, is like when I see students and their growth and I'm like, man, if we were starting at the same time, they would be kicking my butt right now. Like <laughs> students that have been like at this for like six months and like they're giving their launch debriefs and they're like, just did 50,000 bucks. And I'm like, yeah, that took me five years to do. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so that, that brings me immense joy. Um, when you see the ripple effect of what it does to change someone's entirety of their life, I mean, that, that's the drug that you can get addicted to that just never wears off. And that's um, like the best drug. It really is. Better than Adderall. It really is. And look, the thing is, is that people that just, you know, maybe what drew you to Catherine stuff is like when you're talking about manifesting, it's like money and material things. And that's great. I'm all about the material things. Money, 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 money. I love money. Love money. But, but money is like the lowest form of motivation. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's also a byproduct. It is a byproduct. And the, the thing is, is that most people don't get it because they're kind of in like survival mode. So it's mm-hmm. like focused on, I got to pay the bills. I got to just get this amount of money so that I can survive. And so when you're in that, what we would call survival mode, it's really hard to receive a message about, we do what we're doing because we're going to change someone's life. You're like, that's great. I just need to get some money. Right. You know, and yeah. I'm telling you, if you, if you started operating from that place of thriving where it's like, I'm going to make a difference in someone's life. That's where the money comes from. And it's going to take care of you anyway, as a byproduct. Exactly. So there's a lot of mistakes that I see. The biggest one is not doing anything. 
like no action, right? Mm-hmm. Waiting, how long are we hesitating and waiting to make a decision, not realizing that not making a decision is a decision? Like when, when the options are A, B, or C, whether it's to start that business, which niche or which way am I going to do this? Or what's the strategy or who should I follow or blah, blah, blah. Not doing anything, not doing A, B, or C. We have to come face the facts that that's a decision, that you chose option D, which is do nothing. And the fact is, is every successful entrepreneur, business owner, CEO, whatever you want to call them, they had to master the ability to make great decisions very swiftly. And by the way, there's all these cool articles out there about like Fortune 500 execs and stuff that use intuition primarily for their decision-making skills, uh, the decision-making abilities. Like you have to make so many decisions in a day that you, you can't be analytical and weigh the pros and cons and all the pros and cons, you know, all the nerdy stuff, right? Uh, I use my gut and my intuition every yeah. single day. Like we just hired someone today. It was purely based on gut, wow. purely based on that, right? And that's the thing is like, there's studies on decision fatigue. I don't think there's any uh, studies on intuition fatigue, mm. right? Because source isn't limited. Right. So you can tap into that all day long. And Should it's a do, choice. It's it's a choice. Or you could choose not to. But doing nothing is a decision. It's a decision of indecision to do nothing. And doing nothing is the only way that guarantees that you won't get any results. Because action is a prerequisite of results, right? Um, permission is a big one. Most people are ingrained in a society. This is where I get on one of my like conspiracy rants. But most people are ingrained in a society of uh, needing permission. Think of it as a kid. Most people going to like public school. You had to raise your hand to go to the bathroom. Like your bodily needs, body needs to do like bodily functions. And you like aren't allowed to do that unless you get permission from someone bigger than you. So even that whole idea is like I'm small and the rest of the world has the answers. Start to notice how much in your life you're waiting for permission. You don't do something without asking. Like, I even found myself doing it. We went out to dinner with our friends the other night, and there was like a do- a random door to go outside. And I went up to the servers, and I was like, "Can I use this door to go outside?" And she kind of looked at me. She's like, "You can do what you want." I'm like, oh, "That's yeah. that's right, I can." <laughs> I knew that. I was testing you, you know. And, and I was like wow, why was I even asking for permission? Like, I'm a guest at this restaurant. I just need to go outside to make a phone call. And I'm like asking for permission. So where in our life are we still waiting for permission? We, you raise your hand just to ask a question in school. You, you, you can't get to the next grade until you get permission. Everything mm. is about permission. And the fact of the matter is, is when you become an entrepreneur, the moment you say, I want to start a business. I want to do my own thing. I want to work for myself. I want to be a freelancer. I want, I want to be in charge of my own destiny. It's like we still wait for permission to do that. From whom? Who are we waiting for permission from? The mayor of the internet? <laughs> it's never going to happen. And that's one of the most beautiful things is no, when you realize that truth, that no one's ever going to give you permission because you don't need it. And that no one's ever going to come and save you. You can just be free to go do what you want. Now, obviously, when you're Right. Like legally and not harming other people. But Ethically. We, but that's, you know, we're, we know our audience here, right? We're, we're not talking to like, you know, crazy people or anything like that, right? Uh, good crazy. Um, but but so for so long, I found myself doing that. Um, I actually had a coach and I, I launched something and she reached out to me and said, who said you could do this? And I was so embarrassed. Are you serious? I was so ashamed that I took it down. Took it all down. This whole business that I created, this whole thing. And, Did uh, you fire her? No, no. And I don't blame her because if someone said that to me today, I would, I would be like, I did. W- what, you know, like it wouldn't mean, but to me back then it was, it's just evidence of where I was at and yeah. that I still needed permission. And the thing is, is entrepreneurship is the exact antithesis of it. Uh, it's creating something that no one can see. That's, that's what being an entrepreneur is, is to create something that no one else can see. So how could you possibly get permission to create something that no one else can see? It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Like you, you got a, a, a download, but no one gave you permission. And even when you started sharing that with people, if you did, they probably thought you were nuts. They didn't mm-hmm. say, all right, you have my approval. Oh, good. Now I'll do it. You know, which is what most people are doing. And I really want people to transcend that, to opt out of this permission-based paradigm. Um, and notice when we're still in any area of our life, when we're still looking for permission, even from our, our boyfriend, girlfriend, our, our spouse and, and our bosses. And look, I mean, do your job. If, you're, if you work for somebody right. else, like you got to do a good job and all that type of stuff. 
but like permission to just live your life. And those are your toughest critics are those closest to you. Yeah. So, I mean, most people live in a bubble around like their family and their friends and their boss at the time. Cause I, I worked a nine to five when I was building manifestation, babe. And I would always hear comments from some of my coworkers being like, you're charging how much for what, <laughs> you know? And, and I just, I just like knew it. Like, thank God I had the awareness to be like, they're going to be the toughest people and it doesn't matter what they think. And when I sell out my retreat, I'm going to show them, you know, like everything is just going to be okay. But I, I, I think like that's like a huge mistake that people make is they immediately want the approval of their spouse. And like you and I had to both go through yeah. many things around our spouses where they just didn't get it when we would buy certain things off the internet that would help us raise our <laughs> vibration. And, you know, you're paying how much for what? And, yeah. you know, you and I, like, I, I just laugh about it because if it raises our vibration, we're in mm -hmm. because we just know how powerful that is. We oh. know, we know the ripple effect of that. I, there's not, nothing more valuable. Um, and you're worth it. Yeah. I, the, I wrote on story, the, my stories, he tagged you in it about you recommending the biocharger yes. and all these people wrote in. And uh, one per, you know, it's like, how much is it? And I'm just like, I'm straight up, like unapologetic about this. It's 14, 14 grand, $14,000. And, and one person was like, oh my gosh, I, I need this. And blah, blah, blah. How much is it? And I was like 14. And I just made sure to include, and it's like, and, and you're worth it. Like, wow. you know, like, I just want you, you're worth it. If this is, if this is something you want. Yes. Uh, and I made a rule for myself a long time ago that, um, you know, it used to be like a big purchase for me when I, it's about 2012. <laughs> I came home. I was living in New York. I came home and I just got this like desire in me. I said, I want a skateboard. And I went into a local, local skate, skateboard shop and it was a skateboard for a hundred bucks. And buying that thing was like so scary. Like to spend a hundred dollars mm -hmm. on like something that was not like to build your business. And it was just like a toy for me that was like, you know, like be a kid again. And um, I'm just such a like fan of, I don't know, like if it feels good. And yeah. I, and I'm at that, when I did that and I saw the difference it made for me to like, let that money go right. for something for me that was nothing but enjoyment and like improving my internal state. I told myself, if I truly want something, if it's a nine or a 10, right? 10 is like a hell yes. Nine is like almost like I'll, I'll survive without it. If it's a nine or 10, I never for the rest of my life, I'm going to let money stand in the way from what I truly mm -hmm. at the deepest level want. Money will never be the thing. And it's for everybody, for most people, it's what rules their freaking life. It does. Yeah. And what's really powerful, especially like you mentioned you're an INTJ and yeah. so am I. And that's according to the Myers-Briggs personality type. Is that what you would call it? Mm -hmm. Myers-Briggs. Yeah. yeah. And so INTJs are known to be very robotic. Mm. And I remember always hating the Myers-Briggs, like especially when I got into personal development and like this concept of like, you can be whoever you want to be and blah, 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 blah. And you can choose your identity. Yeah. I remember looking at the Myers-Briggs as like one of the most limiting things because I didn't quite understand it through your perspective. When you shared your perspective around how powerful knowing your personality type can be, I finally understood that it's all about discovering your strengths and then banking on them yes. and outsourcing your weaknesses and just knowing that you have a place in this world and you have gifts that no one else has and your your purpose in this lifetime is just to bank on those gifts and change people's lives. And it's just so powerful. But one of the things um, around INTJs is that we are very logical. We are very yes. left brain. We're very yeah. analytical. And you and I both use intuition in our businesses. Um, how did that, you know, like how how do you see, do you believe that there are like, is 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 it like an INTJ to also be intuitive or is that something that you think mm -hmm. that we at some point realize that we're all connected to source and no matter what personality type you are, you have this intuitive edge and then your other gifts come from your personality type as an INTJ. Yeah. And boy, whew, we could, we could do a whole hour on the question you just oh asked. My God. So part um, two coming. <laughs> I mean, really, I did a two part episode on my podcast all about personality types. Uh, and I could have done 10 more. It's so fascinating. Now, again, nothing's like absolute. This is a guideline. It's something that is just nice to know about. And what happened to me about 2009, still struggling to grow my business, I met somebody and they, they said, You're an INTJ. And I'm like, What did you call me? Right. <laughs> Never heard of it before. And then he just, he proceeds to describe everything about me as if he was like a psychic who could like tell my whole life. Like he even just, he even made this whole thing about like why I chose to wear what I wore that day. What? 
Like, he's like, you wore what you wore because it was the closest thing at the top of your dresser and it was the most efficient thing and most like comfortable, casual thing for you. Is that true of your outfit right now? I, I, I try to be a little more strategic. I still want to be comfortable because I'm like, oh, we're going to be filming today. Right. Um, so I was like, I should put a nicer shirt. Your lightning shirt. bolt shirt. Yeah, my, my, my superhero shirt. Not like, a, not like a mustard stain or something like that. You know, <laughs> maybe get something clean today. Um, and I was just like, wow, how does this person know everything about me? And he's like, well, first of all, he's like, I'm an INTJ too. And he's like, go home, take the test and read the description. And for the first time in my life, I was like, I understood a little bit more about me. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of us, we always feel like, we're the weird ones and there's something wrong with us. And I, I grew up with that. I grew up with a lot of that because I was very shy, what you would call shy, but just very quiet. Mm-hmm. I didn't want a lot of friends. I didn't want to be popular. I didn't want to be talking to people all the time. And, and as a result, I just thought there was something wrong with me. And, um, and, and I would just ask like, what's wrong with me? And when I re- read my type, it made perfect sense. And so, yes, it, it, it gave me an answer to a question that I didn't know. I was like, why am I this way? And I read my thing. I was like, that's me. Now I know why. And it allowed me to see things that were strengths that I had been seen as weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And um, that was really, uh, really eye-opening. It actually gave me a lot of self-confidence. Yeah. Like, it was really a lot of self-assurance. So, you know, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, don't, don't yeah. use it. But yeah. it brings up a whole conversation of like, is this who we are? Are we in this box now? And, and I like to say no, because are you right-handed or left-handed? Um, I was born left-handed, mm-hmm. but it's apparently a sin in Russia to be left-handed <laughs> yep. at the time that I was yep. born. So my grandma literally pinned my left arm to my my clothes and I was forced to become right-handed. Yeah. This is my dad, same thing with my dad. Wow. He was born left-handed and they his parents said, nope. Insane they, belief systems. Exactly. But it's a great metaphor for our personality types in terms of Myers-Briggs, their temperaments. So- the fact that you were born left-handed and you could learn right-handed is, is exactly, it, it just proves the exact same metaphor analogy that you can be born one type, but you can, you can learn the other side. Yeah. Okay. It's a temperament. You were, you preferred, you had a preference towards left hand. Yeah. And through conscious awareness and new habits, you, you focused on becoming right-handed. Yeah. Same thing here. Even if I'm introverted, um, or actually, here's a great one. Being anal- very analytical. I can choose to open up a little bit more to intuition mm-hmm. and not just overanalyzing and overthinking. It's conscious choice at first, but over time, boom. And so today, and we were talking about this before the show, I think what can make someone really a super, superpower is a whole brain approach to their life, mm-hmm. especially to business. To have that left brain analytical, you know, linear mind, we don't want to poo-poo one or the other, right or wrong. It's now let's combine that with the right brain, the intuitive, the creative, the inspired mind, and let's have a whole brain approach to our life or to our business. And I think when when I brought in all this weird woo-woo intuition stuff, that's what it allowed for me to do was approach it was a whole brain approach. And that's where things really started to take off. I was like, I'm I'm a strategic business owner. I I know strategy, I know principles, I know marketing, I know I know funnels. I know all this type of stuff. And then when I combined it with this intuitive inspiration and, you know, high vibe frequency matching what I wanted, it was like game over. Yeah. Did you learn then to, you know, you're, you are the face of your brand. Yeah. And so am I. And INTJs, like naturally, that makes them feel very uncomfortable. Like we mm-hmm. like the behind the scenes. We'd rather hide. We'd rather work alone. And all of a sudden, now we're talking to thousands upon thousands of people totally. and showing up on live streams and running teams. And there's like people constantly around us. How did you come to that? Like, mm, yeah, no, no. Cause I was, I tried, I tried to be the behind the scenes for other people. Yeah, you did. And, um, I liked it, but here was, I mean, here's just like the funny thing. It was just like, I saw who I was working with as the behind the scenes person for the, I was the behind the scenes for someone else's front man. I was like, I could do better than them. I could like. Such an INTJ. I know. And it was so stubborn too. This is like stubbornness. And so I was like, all right, I might as well just be both and, uh, and put myself in front and behind. Um, because it's also like, they want to be the behind the scene person, but they don't like working well with others. Exactly. Oh man. We're so complicated. So complicated, but they really don't like, they just do not work well with others. They're the type of person that's just like, I, you know, when like in high school or college, when it was like, okay, we're going to do a group assignment. You're like, no, F, please, no, oh, just let me do it on my own. I'll just, 
I don't want to deal with people. Right. Yeah. So I really, um, yeah, I did resist all that stuff. And then, then it was me. And then I tried building a team cause I knew I, I, introverts are especially about efficiency because they notice that their, their energy gets drained really easily. So Mm -hmm. they don't, they get become very sensitive and mindful of how much energy they expend. And so I was really looking for ways to be more efficient. I was like, Ooh, hiring a team and systems and all stuff. And I just was doing it all wrong. And, uh, years and years of doing it the wrong way. I finally learned the right way. And, you know, it comes back to, we can be do and have whatever we want. And I could choose to become the person I needed to be to run the team and run the business that I wanted. And who I am today, and I don't know if I've shown you by a before and after photo. No. But maybe we'll link it up or something. But who I am today is a very different person than uh, when I started my business. And we found this, this picture. And this is from me when I started 12 years ago versus me just a few months ago. I'm, I'm a very, Stop. very different person. Oh, my God. So <laughs> this is a picture of me. Yeah, like 50, 60 pounds heavier. Like before I got into the Adderall. Completely different person. So I was 230 pounds, dropped all the way down to 140, 145. It's like covered in acne. It's like super insecure. Just, yeah. Um, So we're not, we're not pigeonholed. We're not put in a box. Like you you can create yourself however you you are, but like you're right-handed. Great. That doesn't define you. It just means that like you write with your right hand. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, these are preferences. They're temperaments to who we are. And they absolutely can change. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel like your personality type will also teach you a lot. Like very quickly, I had to learn how do I recharge in the, you know, how do I teach myself to recharge, especially when I don't really have time. Like, especially when I have podcasts to record, interviews to do, um, then my team is coming over, then we have this team meeting. And then tomorrow I have dinner with friends and it's just like, I, I figured it out. It's like, it's like such a huge lesson for me and such a huge experiment for me to figure out, okay, how do I balance the introverted and extroverted side of myself? How do I, um, how do I collaborate with people without draining myself? How do I bring in intuition without losing that logical side? How do I marry the two together? It's like, it's like you have, um, you always share the quote by, is it, um, Bandler or the quality of your life is determined by the quality of questions. Yeah. So it's just yeah. asking yourself better questions, like always. knowing, knowing that you're designed a certain way. And it's so funny because we're both INTJs. We're both Libras or we both have the same human design. So it's like so many crazy it's similarities. Crazy. And so yeah. we're designed to be in a certain way. Our spouses are very similar. I know. I know. So similar. <laughs> they put it's up crazy. With so much. They put up with so much, Poor but thing. it's just, it's, it's, it's powerful because it, it, you taught me that it isn't a box and no one's ever put in the box. But if you can figure out how the universe put you in a very specific body and a very, with a very mm. specific personality, with a very specific gift and yeah. how you were designed in that way to help people, I think is just so freeing. Like your only job is just to discover yourself and what you're capable of and what your potential is. Completely. Yeah. yeah. And, and like, I don't look at myself today as like saying, oh, I can't do that because it's not my type. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if others would, but I don't now. Like, right. look at the last letter, like a J, which is judger, which doesn't mean anything about judging. It just means a lot of structure. Yeah. And so what that can actually mean is, you know, James, it's good to put a little spontaneity in your life every once in a while. Yeah. You know, it's good yeah. to like just go do something randomly today. Like that's it's healthy to kind of create some some balance there. You know, counteract what your normal tendency is just to experience something, something different. And anytime you do something really sp- spontaneous, it probably feels really good. And you're like, it man, does. why don't I do this more often? And then at some point you're like, okay, let's go back to the structure. Yep. So it's like Where's finding finding balance, knowing knowing that there's no such thing as balance, but at least right. getting as close as you possibly can yeah. without driving yourself insane. Yes. Yeah, it's like, I think we crave the other side of that. I think even an introvert wants to be the life of the party. And they just don't want to do the work it takes. Right. And, right. And like, as a judger with all that structure, you want some spontaneity. It's like, we love the idea of being spontaneous. It's like, so go do it every once in a while. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. So it just, it gives us, you know, it's know thyself. I think that's, it's one way to know a little bit more about who you are. Yeah. Well, James, thank you so mm. much for this powerful interview. I just have a couple more questions for it. you. Yeah. One is, what is your, what do you believe your next level to look like? Like, what are you excited to create? Because you're already so freaking successful and I'm so inspired by you and all that you've created and your team. And you're obviously one of my mentors. Like, what is that? Like, what are you manifesting into your life? Mm. Uh, I think someone asked me this recently and I said, you know, a big part of me is like, 
uh, and I'm sure you've had many of these experiences where you're like catching up to what you've created. Do you mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about when yeah. I say that? Where it's like, yeah, there's a part of you that's still like catching up with where you are. And I'm kind of in that phase of like really enjoying that. We had a big last 18 months, very big growth year, a lot of growth this year. And it's kind of like just enjoying that right now. You went from three to 8 million yeah, in we'll, 12 months. Yeah. Well, we went, we were on pace for two and we added a million at the end of the year, like was not expecting that. And so that hit us at three and we had done like two the last three years. So I kind of knew that we were like, so I, was some, I was doing something that was plateauing us. And, uh, and then boom, went to, went to eight. Um, and you know, we're in the middle of the year, so I, I could give predictions, but who knows, you know, anything can right. happen. Um, so, you know, like still catching up with that in a lot of ways, we have a 10 year vision that really scares the crap out of me. Um, and that's something that's much more like nationally recognized. Like we, we really love, um, the coaching and the teaching that we're doing. And I really want to bring the, the methodologies. Like we're working with a lot of coaches right now that, uh, we've trained a bunch of coaches. I now have a staff of, um, 20 coaches. So impressive. It's crazy. Holy crap. We're, we're in a whole phase of, of training them. Um, and part of the 10 year vision is to, is to, uh, m- make the technology that we're creating, the coaching technology more mainstream. So like any business owner, not just like an online entrepreneur on the internet, taking a course. another Bible. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, um, that these could be like training facilities and workshops available all over the country, maybe over the world. And they're not even taught by me. Like we have certified practitioners that come in and stuff like that. So that's like really big, yeah. you know, and, yeah. um, and exciting and exciting. And, uh, that may be the next phase. It may not be, but it doesn't matter. What matters is I'm like thinking about those things. And that always gets you to just stretch a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. And that was the other thing I learned from that, like depression phase in my life where I hit everything I wanted is like always be going like thinking, dreaming about that next big thing. Yeah. While enjoying what you have currently. While enjoying what you have currently. It's like constant paradoxes and yes. balances. Wow. Yes. So where can all my babes find you? Because I know that they're just like, going to rush to your Instagram right now because they're so inspired from this interview. Where else can they find you? Yeah. Instagram is a great place. And then, uh, if, if you'd like to listen to my podcast, um, which you should, you really thank should. You, thank you. I, I think that's like one of the only podcasts I listen to. Oh, thank you. Uh, mind your business podcast.com. Uh, we're on the iTunes and all the places that you would listen to podcasts like Stitcher and uh, Android and all those things. I don't know what we'll, we, we know where they all are. You guys will find it, but yeah, we've got, now we've got about 270 something episodes on that show. I've been doing it for like three or four years now and loving it. Wow. Talking about all the same weird move stuff that Woo-hoo. you do. Yeah. A lot of it is just, you know, it's what my really, uh, passion in all of this has been is I really want to introduce these concepts to the business owner and the entrepreneur. And so yeah. it's a lot of entrepreneurs that have been like limping along and like, I learned all the funnels. I learned all the marketing and all this stuff. It's like, it's still not working. Yeah. And it's like, all right, it's time to look within now. And it's so exciting to hear all those stories where they're like, that's when my business exploded was when I combined the two. And I was like, yeah, me right. too. Me yeah. Too. Manifestation is the edge, you guys. Yeah. Well, if you're listening to this podcast right now, make sure you take a screenshot, make sure you tag both James Wedmore and I together so that we can respond and we can see and We'd love to know your aha moments and all your breakthroughs because I know that this is a powerful, juicy episode. And I'm currently manifesting it for it to be one of the top most downloaded episodes because oh. it's amazing. There's so many golden nuggets that you shared, so many inspiring stories. I just wanted to thank you once again for being on here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be your first guest. And I hope I lived up to your expectations, you even though did. you probably didn't have any, <laughs> but I hope it, it, it lived up to your listeners' expectations as well. So thank you guys for taking a chance on me. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review on iTunes so that I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't already following me on social media, come soak up the extra inspiration on Instagram by following at Manifestation Babe or visiting my website at manifestationbabe.com. I love and adore you so much and can't wait to connect with you in the next episode. In the meantime, go out there and manifest some magic.